In this video, I'm going to show you how to model the IME reverse engineering part. Your first step was to go ahead and use the dial caliper and obtain all the measurements A through AB by measuring the part in lab. Once you have those measurements, you're ready to start creating the model in SOLIDWORKS. So we're going to analyze this drawing first real quick, then we're going to move over to SOLIDWORKS and create the model. Looking at the part, when you need to model a part, you need to analyze the part and figure out what type of features you need to make. So looking at this part, I'm going to end up making a sketch that protrudes out or extrudes out this bottom plate right here, so kind of this overall profile on the top plane. After that, I'll go ahead and I'll create an extrusion that creates this protrusion up here, right here, this kind of round oval part. Then I'll create another extrusion that extrudes out this circle right here. After that, it's pretty much removing material. So then we'll take, we'll create a cutout to create this pocket in, right up here. And then we'll create a cutout to create this hole, this through hole. We could either use the hole wizard or the cutout tool. And then we'll use the hole wizard to create this counter bore. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and create this hole in the front view right there with a the cutout or the hole wizard's hole tool. And then last but not least, we'll add the chamfers to the solid model and we'll be done. So to do that, let's move over to SOLIDWORKS. We'll go File New. And I'll select Part. Press OK. Now if you remember, our first step was to create the extrusion for that bottom base piece. So moving back to the drawing, we have our top view right here. We're going to draw on the top plane this outside profile. And then we're going to use our dimensions to size that profile. Let's go back over here. So we'll go to Features. We'll click on Extrude. We'll select the top plane. And then we'll use our sketching tools to sketch that profile. So let's do this with our line tool. In fact, we can do everything of that entire profile with this one tool. Let me show you. The first part, I'm going to go ahead and lock the line into the origin so it knows where it's located based off the origin and make a horizontal line. Now, if I flip my wrist in the direction of a of a arc, it'll go ahead and turn the line tool into an arc tool. What I can do is I can bring a 180 degree controlled radius around and click my mouse button. At this point I'm going to move in. I'm going to line up with the origin. Click my mouse button. Make a vertical line by clicking my mouse button. Another horizontal line. I flip my wrist making another 180 degree controlled radius come back out, I'll line it up with the origin again, click the mouse button, then come down and close the profile. So you'll see I sketched out the rough profile, and then I'm going to end up using smart dimension to dimension the overall height of the part, which in this case you're going to use your actual me measurements. My measurements are going to be made up numbers. So I'm going to go 4.5 for that number. Now, the next thing we got to do is we've got a dimension, looking at the, the sheet, we're going to figure out where M is located, right? You're going to know the radius size there. So to do that, if I go back to SOLIDWORKS, if I go from the bottom edge to the circle, we can go ahead and put in whatever number you've obtained for that. Then I could size the radius. Ooh, I'm going to actually change mine to more like point that number, 425. And then in order to locate the depth of the slot, come down here, 1.5. Now last but not least, I've got to go ahead and dimension how long the part is. I dimension to the center of the arc. And 
And again, these dimensions are not the dimensions you're going to use. You're going to use the dimensions you reverse engineered off the part using your dial caliper. So once you have this sketch complete, you're going to go ahead and hit Exit Sketch, and you're going to extrude it up the thickness that you measured, which would be thickness F, or the measurement F on your assignment. So going back to SolidWorks, I'm going to pull mine up, and I'm going to go 2.25 check mark. Again, a slightly different measurements than yours, but the process of modeling is exactly the same. So now that I've got the base, moving back to the part, I'm going to draw the sketch to go ahead and make this, this protrusion on top of the part. So back to SolidWorks, I'm going to extrude on the top plane now of this material I press spacebar in normal 2, and what I do is I drag out a rectangle. I then am going to use my smart dimension to size my rectangle. Once I've sized the rectangle, I need to locate the rectangle. So moving back to SolidWorks, You'll see it's located off the top edge and then off the back edge right here, so H and T. So moving back to SolidWorks, I go from the edge to the edge, drag down. I'm going to do 2.0. Then I go from that edge to that edge, drag over 2.75. Again, these are made up measurements, but the process is the same. Now, I might as well go ahead and create the fillets in this sketch as well. So to do that, I simply come over here to the Sketch Tools and pick Sketch Fillet. So whatever size of fillet you measured with your radius gauge, you're going to key in over here in the parameters. And then click on the edges in order to fillet the corners. I'm going to go ahead and make mine 0.325. Check mark. Once you're all done, you go ahead and you click on Exit Sketch and you extrude that up the certain distance that you measured in during when you're reverse engineering the part. I'm going to do one inch. Check mark. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and create the other protrusion out here and then we'll go ahead and start cutting material away. So going back to the drawing, we're going to make this round protrusion however tall we measured for K. So we'll come back to SolidWorks, we'll go extrude, pick this top plane, spacebar normal 2, and we grab our circle tool. Now if I want to make this circle concentric with the outside front radius, I first highlight the front radius, the center mark becomes visible, and I lock that into the center. Now when I use smart dimension, to dimension the diameter, it goes ahead and becomes fully defined because the location for the circle was defined by locking it in or connecting it to the center point of the radius. So they remain concentric. So you size it correctly. You click on Exit Sketch, rotate out, and go ahead and key in whatever size you came up with for this part. Check mark. Now we have all of the solid, we have all of the extruded features we need. We need, if looking back at the drawing, to take away material for the other features. So to do so, let's first create the pocket cutout on this top protrusion right here. So moving back, SolidWorks. I'm going to do an extruded cut this time on the top of this boss that we created there. I hit spacebar and normal too. I can go ahead and I can convert entities or offset entities that are already existing. So if I click on offset entities, I'm going to go ahead and offset it the wall thickness value. So moving back to the drawing, you're going to see whatever you got for you, the measurement you, there's four of them, we're going to offset the geometry that value. So I'm going to go back to SolidWorks and say mine's offset 0.2 of an inch. When I click and click in, it'll go ahead and offset that piece of geometry. Let me show you that 
and again. So I click on, whoops, control Z, didn't want to pick that edge. So when I pick offset entities, I pick the radius and I click in and it'll go ahead and shrink it. So again, offset entities, there, in. Offset entities, that line, that way. So notice I'm able to use existing geometry and offset it from existing geometry. That way, if I was to change the, the sketch for the boss extrude 2, the cutout geometry would move with it with the same amount of wall thickness. So again, offset entities, select chain, inwards, offset entities, inwards, offset entities, inwards, and then last but not least, offset entities, inwards. Now I have a fully closed profile just by offsetting the entities. So if I was to hit exit sketch, you're going to see that gives me my profile that's a 200 thou wall thickness for you. Whatever yours ends up being, go ahead and key that value in. And I can say that I want to cut that out whatever depth I measured. So I hit 0.5 in my case and hit check mark. So you'll see I was able to use the offset entities tool to offset existing geometry to create that sketch. Now moving back to the drawing, you're going to see that Q and double A are the locations for this hole. We have to create the hole on the part. So to do that, we move back to SolidWorks. I want to create a hole up here. Now, because this is a through hole, I could easily do that with an extruded cut. Or I could use Hole Wizard to make basically a through hole. But I'm going to go ahead and just use the extruded cut version for right now. I'm going to go ahead and pick the top surface where I want to create the hole. I press space bar and normal too. And at this point, I go ahead and drag out a circle close to where my hole is going to be located. I then use my Smart Dimension tool to dimension the size of the hole. Then I dimension from the edge of the hole to the edge of the part, or really from the center of the hole to the edge of the part. Key in my value. Then I go from the edge of the hole to the edge of the part. And whatever I measured, I go ahead and key that in. At this point, I hit Exit Sketch, and instead of going a blind amount, I'm going to go through all and hit my check mark. That creates the hole through the part. Now, the next hole, I'm going to actually place it on the side, on the front of the part right here, and I'm going to use the Hole Wizard to do that one, just to show you the differences. So when I pick Hole Wizard, I'm going to make a simple hole, just the hole. And I'm going to size it, not by my drill bit size, but I'm going to look back on the drawing and whatever I picked for my letter Z dimension or whatever I measured for diameter Z, I'm going to key into my custom size in the hole wizard. And realize whatever I measured for A, B, and Y, I'm going to use to locate my hole. So moving back to SolidWorks, because I don't want to drill size, I'm going to click on Show custom sizing and I'm going to say that this hole is 0.313 making up measurements again actually I'm going to do 0.425 now once I've sized my hole I've got to tell it how far down it's going to go so blind holes go not all the way through the part we want a through all hole because so the hole goes all the way through now when I click on position, I'm going to pick the front plane of my part here. I'm going to press space bar and normal too. I then place the hole and I press escape to end, the, unless I wanted to place more holes. So that kind of ends the hole, by like placing holes. And I would use smart dimension now to dimension from the center of the hole to the edge of the part and I key in the exact size or the exact location that I want to locate it off the edge. So I go from the center of the hole to the edge of the part, drag off, 
and 0.825 here. So once I've located it and sized it, I simply hit check mark, check mark. We now have a hole through our part where it needs to go. Finally, the last cutout feature we need to make is going to be the hole wizard in a counter bore. So when I go back to my drawing, I'm going to need to know for the counter bore, I'm going to need to know diameter A for the hole's diameter, diameter B for the counter bore's diameter, and depth C for the depth of the counter bore. So moving back to SolidWorks, I pick hole wizard, I pick counter I'm going to go ahead and say reset the custom sizing values. Keep a reset because we're going to set them right now. Now, if you don't have the sizes of your counter bore, you click on show custom sizing. And my through hole will go first. I'm going to go ahead and pick 0.5. I give it my counter bore diameter next. Then I give it the depth of the counter bore after that. When I have the hole size, the counterbore diameter size, and the depth of the counterbore selected. I go down and I can pick how deep I want the hole. Now, I'm going to go through all with this one because it goes through the entire part. And I'm going to then select positions and select the plane I want to place the counterbore hole on. Now, I'm going to click on spacebar to get the view normal to my site. And I'm going to hover on the edge of the circle so the center point of the other circle shows up so I can make them concentric to each other by clicking my mouse button. Now to, to get rid of the placement of a second counterboard hole, you're going to press the escape button that ends that selection. So I've put the hole right in the center of where the circular protrusion was made or the circular extrusion. So I technically don't have to. It's been fully located, hence the black, the black point instead of the blue point. So I don't really need to give it an X and Y location because I, I related it to the previous feature center. When I go ahead and I hit the check mark, it goes ahead and creates the counterboard hole. Now the last two things we've got to do are the chamfers. Looking at the part, you're going to see there's a big chamfer here. So whatever you measured for in, we're going to chamfer the edge of the part. Then we're going to do the 30 thou by 45 degree chamfers on all the sharp edges on the top and bottom of the part. So we're going to use the same tool to do both. Let's do this. So when I move back to SolidWorks, I want to create a chamfer on this edge. So when I go through and I pick chamfer, which is underneath the fillet flyout menu, I can key in the size and the angle of the chamfer. So if you measured 0.25 for the bigger chamfer, key in 0.25, and you click on the vertical surface that gets chamfered. If you don't see a preview of what the chamfer is going to look like, it's because you have no preview selected. If you click on full preview, it shows you what it's going to look like after you hit the check mark right there. And that'll go ahead and create the chamfer on the edge of the part. Now the last set of chamfers, if I pick chamfer one more time, are going to be the same size. Hence on the drawing you'll see it says 30 thou by 45 degrees TYP. That means any chamfer you see that's not specifically dimensioned is going to be the typical chamfer on the part, which is a 30 thou chamfer. So when I move back to SolidWorks, and when I go ahead and I key in 30 thou, you're going to see that I'm going to want to go ahead and pick the entire top surface. It chamfers the outside and the inside when I pick a surface. So again, if I pick the entire top surface, the outside and the inside. If you want to go ahead and just pick one edge, it'll chamfer around, and you want to make sure that you click all the edges. Now on the bottom, we want everything chamfered, so I click the entire face, and that's going to chamfer everything on every edge of that face. Now when I'm all done, I hit check mark, and I have all the chamfers on the part. If I was to hit spacebar, isometric, you're going to see we have all of the features modeled, 
slightly different sizes than your model. We have all the features modeled minus the engraving. So I'm going to move back to SolidWorks and just show you how to do the engraving. The engraving is a cutout. So what I did in order to engrave a name on the part, I hit extruded cut. I'm going to pick this top face to cut out on, press spacebar and normal too. Then I actually use the text tool to cut out my part. So if I was to type in IME reverse engineering part, you're going to see down towards the bottom it places the text on the origin. In fact, wherever I click my mouse is where the text is going to be placed. Well, you'll notice that's not the font I used. So if I wanted to change the font size and the actual font, I unclick off Use Documents Font, and I click on Font, and I'm able to change the units or the so the height of it in inches. So if I wanted it at point two, I could do that, and I could change the text. I like to go ahead and use impact at point two tall. So when I press OK, you're going to see it's very close to the actual size and the type of text. I don't remember the exact size that was used to create this part. Let's go back in here, hit font. We could go ahead and put in 0.35 maybe. You're going to see that's a lot closer to what we actually have on our part. Yours is going to be different because you have a different size part. And again, we're not grading on whether or not you engrave the text into the exact size. So when I go ahead and I click on check mark and exit sketch, it wants me to cut the text a certain depth into my part. Text is engraved into a part, so I'm going to cut it out at a real small amount, like two thou deep. So when I hit check mark, you're going to see I now have that text cut away into my part. Finally, when I hit spacebar and isometric, it becomes gives me the pictorial isometric view. And I'm going to go ahead and go File, Save As. And I'm going to save that in a file folder where I can easily access it and save it where I'm going to save my drawing. So I'll go ahead and just save it in my reverse engineering folder. This is my Camtasia example. And I hit Save. So at this point, you're ready to go on and create the engineering drawing. So join me in the next video to show you how to go through and create the engineering drawing as you already have that skill set from previous assignments. Have a great day.